Hey there guys, Ian here. Today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial. This one is all about preparing for post-production. And by that I mean preparing your scene and making sure you have everything ready to bring into After Effects so you can actually um, do everything you want without having to come back and re-render. So I've got this scene here, which is um, something I'll probably give away. Um, it's a kind of like a template I've been working on, and it's really easy to change using um, some basic Espresso. Um, so one thing you want to do is make sure that um, everything's like centered perfectly. You want everything to fit your scene. And the first good step to make sure that's right is to go to Options, Configure, and if you go to the View tab, the Tinted Border, I like to turn this to 100, and what you get now is the actual camera um, ratio, and so you can actually see what will be seen by the camera and what won't, and this is a good way just to make sure that everything fits in your scene fine. Um, the next step you want to do is think that, say you render it out and one object is slightly too bright but everything else is perfect, um, you can actually make it so you render out each object almost individually but it's using something called um, object buffers which creates a matte outline um, for each object uh, so that you can actually adjust it later. And so what you want to do for that is to go into your scene and find, um, so I'm going to say um, the text here. Um, maybe this will be too bright when it renders out or too dark. And I want a kind of separate uh, image just for the text. I'm going to right click on the text, go to Cinema 4D Tags compositing, then go over to object buffer and enable one. Now this alone won't do anything, you need to go over to your render settings and under multipass you just want to check it, right click object buffer and the group ID actually relates to the buffer number here and just so you know what uh, things are you can double click here and say main text if that's what it is and so I could do the same for my logo here. So this is my logo. So right click Cinema 4D Tags Compositing and enable Object Buffer 2. Then add another Object Buffer, change this number to 2, and this will be Logo. So when you render this out, in fact, um, I'll show you. I'll show you in another scene quickly, which doesn't have any lights. Um, so if I render, um, say, a sphere and a cube, and I put a compositing tag on both, ooh, and make that number two and that number one, and then add the object buffers here, so one and two, when you save your multi-pass images here. Uh, actually, I might not have to save it. If I just render this out here, you can see, yeah, here we are. Almost. Yeah. So we have our main image here, and if we go to single pass, you can actually see we have our cube and our sphere. And if this was an animation, uh, you would actually get an image sequence for both objects and all you have to do in After Effects is set the track map um, to this buffer and then it pretty much cuts out your object so you don't have to rotoscope anything or pen tool anything and it all works perfectly. Now another thing you might want to do is export all your lights from the scene and that way you can actually um, bring into After Effects all your lights and use optical flares or any other program that uses lights like Particular, uh, Particular even, 
um, and you can actually track flares to them so you can get a realistic 3D flare in your scene. And that's just all in this compositing project file. All you have to do is save it and I like to tick these three boxes. I'm not sure uh, which ones you can have unselected and it'll still work but I just tick them all just because it works fine. Uh, and you can export to various um, programs here. I believe R14 of Cinema 4D, you can export to Nuke as well, which is a really powerful compositing program, uh, something I'll be learning shortly. Um, what you, also, what you have to do, uh, if you want to save all these multipasses, um, for the multipass, I normally use uh, PNG sequences, but you could use TIFF um, and make sure you save them out into a separate folder um, as well as saving all these out. Multipass don't really like to be saved afterwards. I know you can uh, render out an image sequence and then save after, but um, I personally would uh, save everything. And the good thing about image sequences is if your computer crashes during the process, um, you can actually come back and continue your render because it will save each image as it finishes. So another thing you might like to do is actually introduce a depth pass which can be found in the multipass right at the bottom. Now this alone won't do anything unless you set up your camera. So again I'll make a new scene and kind of show you what I mean. So I'm going to make a cube and make it 50 by 50 by 50 and throw it into a cloner set it to grid array and just throw on a random effector maybe throw the clones up to 5 just so we get something a bit like this and I might even change this to 300 just so a bit more spread out so if I insert a camera here and get our depth pass on, if we render out here, you can see we get one image but it's completely white, it almost looks like a object buffer. So what we need to do is come out of our camera and line the focus distance up and you can put it somewhere like here. Now if you render did I render? Now we get a completely black um, picture. So come back in, go to details, and what I like to do is kind of keep everything within um, this boundary box here. So you get something like this, and when you render now, you can see we get this lovely image here. And so we have. Um, all these blacks here and a gradient to white. Uh, you can adjust this all you like and you can actually adjust it in post-production using exposure uh, just to refine it slightly and what this will do is you can use um, the camera lens blur uh, filter or you can use a third-party plugin uh, to actually do all your, ooh, all your depth a field in post-production and not only will that speed up rendering but if you get the depth of field wrong in Cinema 4D um, you'd have to re-render it completely whereas if you do it in post-production you can actually go back and change it. Um, so this is a great way to kind of speed up your pro uh, process and um, as you can see here, we have loads of different um, options in here. Uh, so you can actually export hundreds of different things. You can export all the materials as well if you want to really fine tune them. But I normally, when I do all these, I normally just have a depth pass and a few object buffers and maybe certain, like, very. Um, few times I'll do anything more than that. I'll normally export almost every material just in case. Um, but yeah, this, as I said earlier, this is a template I should be giving out soon. Um, 
I just need to work on it a little bit more, trying to make it as simple as possible to change, and hopefully I'll kind of make the render settings optimised so it doesn't take a horrendous amount of time, because I think at the moment it takes a little while. It's not too bad, but um, I want to change the materials slightly, but it's looking alright. So I hope this has been useful. This is a really great way uh, to save hours of work, especially on large projects. And yeah, it saved me loads of time on past work. And it's a great way so you can do most of your work in After Effects and you can see results instantly rather than having to render out each image again and again and again. So I hope this has been useful to you and if it has just leave a little like and a comment below and if you have any other ideas for tutorials I'd love to hear them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.